All right, class, I wanted to demonstrate how to use, uh, make a histogram of stat with stat plus for using that on a Mac. Um, so first of all, you got to open up your data. I'm using this m, &M data uh, and then uh, scroll over to stat plus, probably using, uh, what is this, uh, command tab. So you got stat plus up here, statistics, basic statistics and tables. So this is the confusing thing. There's this little guy down here called histogram. Let's do this first. This is not the right way to do this. Uh, it gives you terrible results. I don't know why. Anyway, but let's try it just so I can show you that it's not the right way to do it. Don't use this histogram. There's another way to do it. It'll make it a lot easier and make it actually look right. It looks like, let's do it just so you see what is wrong. So uh, it doesn't matter if you make these changes, it's still wrong. <laughs> I've tried this over and over again. Uh, continuous variable. So select in here and say, let's do how, m how many m, &M or uh, how much does your m, m bag weigh? Control shift down. Got to go back to stat plus. So there it is. Um, so you should be able to leave the bin ranges empty and all this stuff empty. You should be able to just say okay. I think this would work if you had bin ranges. Uh, we never really talked about how to make bin ranges, um, and so I don't I don't feel like you need to do that. But if you click okay. It goes and creates this histogram for you uh, that's really goofy looking. Uh, you wouldn't really know that this was goofy looking if you didn't know what the histogram was supposed to look like. Uh, let me show you what it was supposed to look like. So it's supposed to look something like this. This is the one that came out of the PC version. Uh, and so this is, what it get, and this is what it gives us. So that's really not even close. And if you look a little closer at what's going on here, uh, you can look at the bins. And the bins are different sizes. So this is 44 to 49, which has a, a size of about 5, right? 44 to 49. And the next one is from 49 to 51. So that's got a bin of 3. And the next one is a bin from 51 to 52, which has a bin of 1. And the next one has a 52 to 54, which has a bin of 2. So I, I have no idea. This I don't know what they're doing at the software when it comes to making these bins. They claim to be doing it the same way Microsoft is, but they're not. No, no. The answer is that is not true. So let me show you another way to do it with Stat Plus. So, by the way, I would actually refer, prefer you to use Megastat over Stat Plus, but if you're using Stat Plus, let me show you a better way to do this. Uh, all right, so let's try it again. Stat Plus, statistics, basic statistics, and tables. Go to descriptive statistics. Just stop there. Descriptive statistics. Choose the variable you want. Uh, in this case, we want how many M&Ms, uh, how much does the M&Ms weigh? And then go into, <coughs> into advanced options and say plot histogram. <coughs> Excuse me. Plot histogram. Uh, and then the only thing we have to come up with is actually it says the number of intervals, and the default is 10. Uh, I've kind of looked around a little bit, and there is a few kind of rule of thumb, rules of thumb of how to figure out how many intervals. This means how many bins should there be. Uh, and the general rule of thumb I came up with was it should be the square root of the number of observations you have, um, but it should never exceed something like 20. So say if you have like a million observations, well, you can't take a square root of a million and whatever that is. That's not a good idea. Just, it shouldn't be any more than about 20. Um, in this case, I think we have about 50 or 48 or something. So square root of that is uh, just like under 7. Um, so we could do about seven bins. Uh, so the same problem, Excel spit out, uh, so the PC version of Excel spit out 12 or 13. So I don't think it matters that much. Uh, so anywhere from like seven, seven to 13, it will make the picture look a little bit different. Um, which is, uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that's probably okay, but it's still going to look a lot better than, uh, <laughs> than the thing it gave us. So let's just leave it at 10. Uh, but, you know, in, in another exercise, you could always just stick with the square root of the number of, uh, of, uh, of observations. And I think you're supposed to round down. So in our case, I think we should probably technically should, should have six, uh, cause I think the square root of 48 is like six point, uh, or yeah, see, something like that, 6.9 or something. Let's just stick with 10 just to see what it looks like. So click on okay. And then we're good. Click on okay. Does this little thing. Uh, creates a whole new, uh, a whole thing, a whole new thing, and here we go. So this is actually looking uh, quite a bit better, pretty close actually to, to uh, what uh, the PC version gave us. So let's clean it up a little bit. So the first thing is to get rid of these gaps in between the bars. So if I double click on any of these, we get this little thing that says gap width. Just change that to like five percent, uh, and then we're okay. So that's looking good. Um, the other kind of goofy thing here is that they, instead of putting the actual bin numbers down here, like the ranges, they just give us a number, 1 to 12. So we can fix that. Um, 
by the way, if I click in the data and then look up in here, it tells me where the data is. And I, you know, unless you've had some experience, you might not really be able to decipher this. But it, it actually says it's in a in a in a hidden chart data one. What that means is there's another hidden tab in here called hidden chart data, and it always does this. So this is something we'll have to do every time we make a histogram. So we have to right click down here on the tab title, right click and say unhide, and then it will show up this little guy that says, "Oh, you want to unhide this one?" And you say, "Yeah, that's what I want to unhide." So there's a whole other data uh, tab under here, and this is actually what's being read to create this. Um, so you could do like we did with the PC version uh, and say, you know, I don't like this very first bin. Let's collapse it into the second bin and make that the number two and delete this first guy. So that's okay. So then if we come back to this, we can see, yep, now that's gone away. The real important thing, though, is to make sure that we get the right labels down here. So how do we do that? If I click on the data anywhere and say right click, right click, and then say uh, uh, to select data select data we get this uh, this little guy that pops up right here uh, that just tells us what data is being used here problem is is there's no x-axis labels x-axis labels so all you have to do is click on this little cell and say use these things that are right here as your x-axis labels that's what these are these are the bins so this is sort of opposite of the PC version the PC version shows the bins on the left side and then the right side shows the counts, the frequencies. On this side, it's other ways, like frequencies and then the bins. So anyway, so you go in there and say, all right, use those as your x-axis labels. And then that's it. Just click on OK. And then we go back, and then we have the right labels down here. Uh, I would, I think this is way too small a font. And this is uh, a, uh, a Mac version thing where it makes the, the font teeny tiny. So I would go back to home. Uh, so first click on the labels down here, home. Make the fonts a little bigger by using this little A plus thing guy. Change this thing that says values to, uh, oh, I could get rid of it. That's what I meant. To M&M uh, bag weights. Uh, whatever label that you're using that's appropriate. So let's make that a little bigger so you can see that. Same with this axis. So if I click on this axis, make it a little bigger, be able to see it. Uh, change that and then the title I would change the title to something like histogram of histogram of M&M bag weights hit enter I'd also make that bigger that's it so there that's looking much better in fact let's take a look at how it compares to uh, to the one that the PC version made for us so there's the PC version uh, and there's the version we just came up with. So actually, they look really pretty much exactly the same. So that's good news. Uh, they're a little, maybe a little slightly different, but this the shape looks pretty much close to the same. So anyway, that's the way to do that with uh, with Stat Plus. So Stat Plus, in summary, stay away from this thing down here that says histogram. It's I don't know what it is. It's garbage. Click on Descriptive Statistics, highlight your data, and then click on Advanced Options, Plot Histogram, figure out how many intervals. Stick with 10 at first if you're not real sure. Uh, but if it looks it looks like it's not quite very good, play around with that. It should be the square root of the number of observations, no more than 20 uh, intervals, though. All right, that's it. Thanks.